What's going on, people? Good morning. Welcome to another very early start. I'm in London on foot now on my way to take the tube to go check out a very interesting part of city life from the mobility sphere, which is the new London taxi. Now, I've seen this thing before. Um, obviously, it was at Goodwood. It was previously I was invited up to uh, the factory, which is um, very near Coventry, up there in the uh, heart of the UK, Detroit, as I call it, basically. Um, the heartland, the Midlands, which is where all of the UK's manufacturing, automotive manufacturing used to take place, still does. Um, so, yes, it's just before 7 a.m. And um, let's, let's see what this, what's going on over in, uh, in the East End, where, um, I don't even know, some artsy venue, no doubt, showcasing the TX5, which is basically a electric taxi uh, designed by a, an arm of Peter Horbury's design team, so at Geely. Um, he has a design studio out in Barcelona, which is where David Ancona is based. And that is the design team responsible for the London taxi. So let's go and see what's going on. Let's go. And here we are, here's the baby. What I'd like to do is just talk you around the car a little bit and explain some of the details and why we did it, how we did it, and uh, all of that sort of thing. If I start at the front of the vehicle, the face of this car was very, very important. We see faces everywhere, our brains are wired towards recognising faces. But the face of this car had to be really quite finely tuned. It didn't have to look too cute, it shouldn't look too aggressive, or it shouldn't really look too retro. The whole idea was that you had to look reliable, serious, yet friendly, to try and project the sort of image that you would want to find from a proper licensed cab. And of course, the, uh, the, the driver. You'll note that we have 
the round light, but now we have this large circular DRL where we've taken the round lights on the old cars and given it a much more contemporary twist. And in fact, these form the indicators. Those actually flash as the indicators. It is quite spectacular, I can guarantee. At the front, we have the old fairway and uh, FX4. So here you have a discrete chrome grille that's set back into a body color recess. And you'll notice the rectangular shape with the offset badge, which is very much part of our design heritage. Because of the crash requirement, the vehicle has quite a long front overhang. To try and disguise that, in this transitional area, we've pulled the surface back to give our bubble, <coughs> but also pulled the light around the corner to visually shorten this overhang. Moving on to the side, I mentioned earlier this idea of adding horizontal lines to visually reduce the height of the vehicle. I suppose we call it proportional engineering. We have this big glass graphic that runs right around the front of the car, thus stretching the cabin as much as possible. We've got the shoulder. The classic shoulder is actually soft, but we've gone for a sharp line, a much more modern and contemporary treatment. But you'll note that it still has a haunch at the rear, this subtle upswing over the rear wheel. We've got this very large, very bright door handle arrangement as well, which introduces another horizontal line. Below that, a light catching, which again lightens the lower body, and underneath that, a chrome trim, which introduces another one. So with all of these horizontal lines, we visually stretch the vehicle and we lower it. The rear of the car, the shoulder comes around and forms a recess for the rear. And we have the traditional rounded bustle back that you, that you have in there. But there's one very interesting thing about this car, and I'm sure most of you have noticed it, that makes it very different to the current TX sphere. And that is the door. You'll notice that the door is actually rear hinged, it's going back to the old TX4. There's a very good reason for this. On a conventionally hinged door, you have to, after you've talked to the cabin, you have to run down the back of the car, open the door, move into the vehicle in that direction, then change direction and get back in the seat. With this one, you say, take me to Wapi, or whatever, and you'd have to walk straight into there. Inside, we have a very generous three of rest seating. We have three rearward facing flip down seats. We have an enormous panoramic roof. Um, it has Wi Fi, you can have independent uh, eating controls for the river. And of course, the best thing is when you arrive at the south, you can step out just like you would with certain well known luxury. So, thank you very much.
so the London taxi goes global basically we've got a new name new brand new product designed in Barcelona by a very small team of 12 people to basically make sure and ensure that the brand would make an impact they've got 250 of these taxis slated to be on the roads in Amsterdam in the Netherlands in by January so already that's uh, a, a, a step in the right direction for this company which clearly um, you know you can't just supply cars to one market anymore it has to be a global product that's just the way that it it will be competitive and the company will stay afloat and alive and you know become successful definitely from a financial perspective so um, it's interesting to see such an iconic um, automobile uh, an iconic British product that is has been on postcards um, <laughs> you know for London for well a century pretty much almost um, but it's it's really definitely something that is interesting to look at from a packaging perspective because this car is uh, offers a lot more space in something that's not all that much bigger um, it does certainly appear taller um, and it is in many ways um, just a, a a benefit of this electrical um, powertrain that they were able to implement so the London taxi the evolution of the London taxi now in the TX5 stage um, and a successful product that seems to be a very cool office for a lot of these guys that spend an enormous amount of time in that vehicle ferrying people around so we'll find out a little bit more about it in the coming months, but ultimately new brand, new product, still maintaining the lineage of the quintessential London taxi.